Hi everyone, welcome to the second lesson of the Crow Panel ESP32 HMI tutorial. In this lesson, I will demonstrate how to display arbitrary graphics and text on the screen. To achieve this effect, we need to use two graphics libraries, TFT SB library and Lovian GFX library. But you don't have to use both libraries at the same time. If you are using a 2.4 inch, 2.8 inch or 3.5 inch board, you only need to use the TFT SB library. However, for a 4.3 inch, 5 inch or 7 inch board, you should use the Lovian GFX library. Next, I will demonstrate the process of displaying arbitrary graphics using the Lovian GFX library on 4.3 inch, 5 inch and 7 inch screens. Open the course file and navigate to the code used in the second lesson. Once you've found it, open it. If you are still unsure where to download the course file, please refer to the description of this video, where I will provide a link to the course materials. Alternatively, you can find it on the wiki page of the product. The code we're discussing, which displays graphics and text, is surprisingly concise, consisting of only approximately 40 lines. However, before utilizing this code to draw graphics and print text, you may be puzzled about where the Lovian GFX library is being utilized within this code and how to configure the Lovian GFX library. Let's first address the first question. In this demo code, I have placed the configuration code for the display and touch parts in the GFSA comp. H file. Opening this file, you can see that it includes the header file for the Lovian GFX library and uses the display driver code from the Lovian GFX library. However, due to the possible differences in hardware components for each board, we often need to modify these codes based on the hardware information of the board. But if you don't know enough about electronic hardware knowledge, you can simply modify the macro definition according to the comments I wrote in the code to complete the display driver configuration. Assuming that you are using a 5-inch board, you don't need to make any modifications because it has already defined the corresponding macro. However, if you are using a 7-inch board, you need to first comment out the 5-inch macro and then uncomment the 7-inch macro. This way, when the code is compiled, the compiler will only compile the display driver code corresponding to the 7-inch board based on this macro definition. However, I will use a 5-inch board to demonstrate in this lesson, so I now need to define the Crow Panel 50 macro. Remember to comment out the other two unused macros, otherwise it will cause errors. After I defined the macro for the 5 inch board, the compiler would compile this code. In this code, we use the interface provided by the Lovion GFX library. We only need to complete this code based on the hardware information of the board. We opened the course folder and found the schematic diagram for the 5 inch board in the file and opened it. This is the schematic diagram for the 5 inch board. The middle section is related to the ESP32 module and the part we will focus on in this lesson is related to the screen. On the right side, you can see the representation of the screen in the schematic diagram, and these are the pins of the screen. The labels on the pins indicate where they are connected to. In this part of the code, it is related to the configuration of hardware connections, and there are brief comments after each line. Let's first look at the first zero. GPIO number 8 and see what is related on the schematic diagram. When we find GPIO 8, we can see that it is connected to B3, not B0. Why is that? Don't worry, let's continue to look at GPIO 3. In the code, the corresponding comment for GPIO 3 is bone, but in the schematic diagram, it is connected to B4. And here we can see that B0, bone, and B2 are not connected to any GPIO pin. In other words, the B0 to B4 in the code are just rearranged, but actually B3 to B7 are used. Of course, for easier understanding, you can change the B0 to B4 in the comment to B3 to B7. Then looking at G0 to G5, we can see from the schematic that G2 to G7 are actually used, and the pins and codes used are also corresponding. R0 to R4 also use the same method. In addition, we can see that this screen uses RGB 565 encoding, where RIUGA, B represent red, green, and blue, respectively. 
Red occupies 5 bits, green occupies 6 bits, and blue occupies 5 bits, for a total of 16 bits. Therefore, the color depth of the screen is 16 bits. In addition to the 16 I0 pins that control the colors, there are other I0 pins that also need to be consistent with the code. These can be found in the schematic diagram. I think I've already taught you the method, so I will not continue to expand on it. Next is the display frequency, as it is already very close to the maximum value. It is not recommended to increase this value any further. Next are the screen parameters, which are filled in according to the screen datasheet, so please do not make any modifications to this part. This part is for the configuration of backlight I.O. pins, and this part is for the configuration of touch I.O. pin. The touch frequency should not be set too high, as this I2C port can also be used for communication with other sensors. Below that is the I2C address for the touch screen. Please do not modify this address, as it will affect the touch functionality. That's the end of the configuration demonstration. Whether it's a 4.3 inch, 5 inch, or 7 inch screen, they are all configured using this method. But so far, I have only talked about how to configure the interface of Lovian GFX, but I haven't installed the Lovian GFX library yet. Therefore, when we open this demo code, we should first install this library. Click the button on the left side of the IDA to open the library manager. If you are using an older version of the IDA, you need to open the library manager in Sketch. Then search for Lovian GFX, find the one provided by Lovian 3, and click Install. As for the version, I would recommend that you install the latest version like me. During the installation process, we can click on more info to view the library's description. Here, we can see the library's display effect and the chips or boards supported by this library. However, for beginners, it is only necessary to understand its functions first. Learning how to use the functions provided by it to draw the graphics or interface they want is the most important thing. For example, the fill screen function fills the entire screen with a specified color and the fill circle function draws a solid circle. We only need to specify the X and Y coordinates of the center of the circle, as well as the radius and color of the circle. The set cursor function can set the cursor at a certain coordinate, and the print function prints the specified characters at that location. After watching this video, you can try to add other functions to draw your favorite patterns in addition to the functions I'm currently using. Well, the Lovian GFX library has been installed. Next, I will compile and upload this code to the 5-inch board to see if the screen is drawn as I wrote the functions. Before compiling and uploading, be sure to configure the compilation environment. Because I have a 5-inch screen, I need to set it to ESP32 S3 chip, huge app, and OP IP SRAM. Finally, Connect the board to the computer with USB and select the corresponding serial port. I have already explained the content of configuring compilation information in detail in the first lesson. If you forget, please be sure to watch the first lesson before starting, because the compilation time of Arduino IDE is relatively long. If you configure it wrongly, you will waste a lot of time compiling a program that may not work properly. Well. After the compilation is completed, it will automatically reset and start and draw patterns and characters according to the functions I wrote. So the demonstration of using the Lovian GFX library on 4.3 inch, 5 inch, and 7 inch boards ends here. Next is the demonstration of using the TFTSB library on 2.4 inch, 2.8 inch, and 3.5 inch boards to display arbitrary graphics on the screen. First, open the course file, open the course folder of the second lesson, find the common code for 2.4 inch, 2.8 inch, and 3.5 inch screens, and open it. After opening the demo code, you can see that it includes the header file tftsb. You may not be familiar with what the tftsb library is used for. The TFTSB library is a graphics library that allows you to call functions within it to display arbitrary patterns and characters on the screen. For example, the fill screen function can fill the entire screen with a certain color. 
The fill circle function draws a solid circle at the given coordinates, and the radius and color of the circle can be determined by U. The set cursor function can set the cursor at the given coordinates and use the print function to display the specified characters. Because the screen's coordinate origin is defaulted to the top left corner, the final screen display may look like this. After understanding the role of the TFTSB library, let's take a look at how to install it. Click on Sketch, find Include Library, Open Library Manager. If you're using a newer version of the IDA, you can click the button on the left side of the IDE to open the Library Manager. Search for TFTSB and find the latest version provided by Bodmer. Click to install it. Because the hardware information of each board is different, you need to configure the TFTSB library according to the board you are using after installing the library. Okay, after installing this library, you need to go to the library directory to find its configuration file. If you don't know where the library directory is, you can click on the file in the upper left corner of the IDA Open Preferences and under Sketch Location is the path to the library directory. Paste it in the file path, press Enter, and go to the library directory. Find the folder of the TFTSB library, open it, and then find the file named User Setup. Oh, which is the configuration file you are looking for. You can open it with any editor. Next, you need to configure this file based on the hardware information of the board you are using. First, you need to select the corresponding driver based on the screen you are using. This requires selecting the chip used by the screen. If you don't know what chip is used by the screen you are using, you can find this information on the product page. Open the Crow Panel ESP32 HMI series topic page and scroll down. You will see a table where you can see that the 2.4 inch screen uses the ILI 9341 chip. Therefore, you need to select the ILI 9341 driver in the user setup. H file and follow the requirements of the comments. Only one can be selected and the rest need to be commented out. So, if you're using a 3.5 inch screen board with an ILI 9488 display chip, you need to comment all the drivers and only keep the ILI 9488 macro. Because I will be using a 2.4 inch board for this lesson, I need to change back to the ILI 9341 here. Then scroll down to find the section for setting the resolution. The resolutions for 2.4 inch and 2.8 inch screens are both 320 by 240. Simply find the corresponding macro and uncomment it. If you are not sure what the resolution of the screen you are using is, you can also find this information in the table on the Crow Panel ESP32 HMI series page. Finally, you only need to configure the pin information for the screen. While there is default pin information provided, since you are using an ESP32 instead of an ESP8266, you need to comment out this section of the pin information. Then, continue scrolling down to find the section labeled ESP32 board. Uncomment this entire section and start modifying it. Pin information cannot be obtained from the product page, so you will need to get it from the schematic. Open the schematic diagram of the 2.4-inch board stored in the course file, and follow the sequence to find out which I.O. pin of the chip is connected to the MOSI pin of the screen. Strangely, there is no MOSI-related pin in the schematic diagram of the touch part, but if you pay attention to the comments, you can find that in some screen schematics, MOSI is named SDA. In the diagram, you can easily find the SDA pin, which is connected to the I.O. 13 pin. Therefore, it should be changed to 13 here. Next, Find the pin connected to TFTS CLK, which is IO14. The CS pin is connected to IO15, and the DC pin is connected to IO2. The reset pin is connected to the reset pin of the ESP32 module, so it is modified to negative 1 here. The backlight pin is connected to IO27. Next, we come to the CS pin for touch, which is connected to IO33. Since both the display and touch use the same SPI, only the CS pin for chip selection is different. In addition, the touch data also needs to be returned to the MCU through a pin. From here, we can see that the pin used to receive touch data is I at 12. In the setup file, you need to add a definition for MISO to tell the TFTSB library that the touch pin number is I at 12. Now, 
Scroll up to find the last item that needs to be modified. Here, the configuration related to backlighting is uncommented. The backlight pin number is consistent with the one just set. The following one remains at high, which tells the TFT SB library that the high level is used to light up the backlight. There are only four places to modify. If you are worried about making mistakes, you can use the setup file that I've already configured. You can find it in the course file and simply copy it to the TFT SPL library directory. At this point, the configuration of the user setup file is complete. Save and close the file and return to the Arduino IDE. When the demo code is compiled, the TFT SB library will call the modified user setup file in this header file and compile the configured driver based on it. By now, I hope you have understood how to configure and use the TFT SB library. If you want to learn more about drawing functions, you can open the library manager, search for TFT FP SBI, click on more info to go to the library's GitHub page and find the keyword file. You can find the names of all the drawing functions in this file. I have already drawn the image I want using functions. Now let's compile this code and upload it to the board to see the effect. Click Tools and select the compilation information corresponding to the board. I am using a 2.4 inch board, so here I should select ESP32WROMDA module. If you are not sure how to configure the compilation information based on the board, please watch the first lesson first. Connect the board to the computer with a Type-C cable, then select the serial port number of the board on the computer and click Upload. The upload process takes a long time, so I will speed up this part of the screen. Yeah, it's more or less as expected. This video of this lesson ends here. If you like this series of courses, please subscribe to my channel and you will receive notifications as soon as the course is released. See you next time.